AngularJS is a front-end framework, which means it gives us as developers a very easy way to build single-page web applications, but it doesn't care about the back-end. It doesn't care about what kind of database we want to use or what kind of scripting language we want to use on the server. It only cares about the front-end. And if we want to interact with data from a server, we have to be sure to expose an HTTP server that serves up our data. And Angular gives us a few ways to make this interaction very easy. And the first way that it does it is with its HTTP service. And the HTTP service has some methods like post, get, put, and delete. And those are the common HTTP verbs that you've probably heard of before. So to get a sense for how this works, we're going to mock out some interaction with an HTTP server just locally. The first thing we'll want to do is create a new folder called data. And within this folder, I'm going to create a new file and call it data.json. What we can do now is take all of this data that we have in here, we'll take that array and we will paste it into the data.json file. Now if we save that and come back over here, we really don't need our cribs data variable anymore because our data is not going to be local to this factory anymore. We'll want to use HTTP to get that data. So the first thing we do is we inject it into our function here. Now this get cribs method was previously just returning that local data. But what we want to do now is we want to say that we want to return an HTTP get call to data slash data dot JSON. So now when this get cribs method is used elsewhere in the application, it's going to make reference to this function, which will return an HTTP get request to our data, which exists here. We wouldn't typically have a JSON file with some data sitting within the project folder. Rather, this would be some kind of endpoint. Now, to make use of this within the controller, we've got to change things up a little bit. So let's come back over here to our cribs controller. And what we'll want to do is just take that out and simply declare that we want a scope.cribs property first. And we'll say that we want to use the cribs factory and use the get cribs method on it. And Angular's HTTP service gives us a success method. If you have ever used jQuery to do any kind of AJAX, this might look familiar. We have to provide a callback that has data as a parameter, and that's gonna be data that comes from the call to our data.json file. And so in the success method, what we wanna do is we wanna say our scope.cribs is equal to the data that is returned. And along with success, we also have an error method. And this error method works in much the same way. We provide a callback function that takes error as a parameter. And if there is an error for now, we'll just log that to the console. And just to make sure this is working, let's go back over to the browser. And if we refresh, we see we still get all of the data coming through just as it was before. The difference now is that the data is into its own file and we're using a factory to make an HTTP request for that data. Then within the controller, we use this get cribs method to make a call to that data. When it successfully comes back, we are going to put it on scope here. And if there's an error, we're just logging the error to the console. So that's how we make use of the HTTP service to query data. And we haven't taken a look yet at how we would save data with HTTP, but it's worth noting that there's another way to do HTTP requests with Angular, and that's with the resource service that Angular provides. Resource is really designed to work with what are called RESTful APIs, and it gives us some methods like query and save and remove, and it's kind of an abstraction over the HTTP service. HTTP is kind of considered to be a lower level service in Angular. So again, while we haven't really wired up a true backend for our application, we can get a sense for how it works by making our data.json file be the place where the data comes from. So that's it for this lecture, and as you're aware, we really haven't done a whole lot with our application yet, but in the next lecture, we're going to create some page structure and get the application looking a little bit nicer.